where I'm going to finish them, but then I'm going to need other stuff to work on when it's finished. Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and this is Birch and Lily where I talk about all the crafty things that I have been working on over the past couple weeks. Today is episode 110. It's still weird saying that we're in the hundreds, um, but kind of cool at the same time. So 110. I have lots of knitting to show you today. I still haven't been cross stitching. I don't know why. I might have to start something new <laughs> to get myself back in the cross stitching mood. Sometimes I find if I'm not feeling like doing something, starting a new project really sets me off. So maybe I need to start a new project to get myself back in the cross stitch mood. But I have been doing some knitting, so I have lots of fun stuff to show you guys today. Before we get started, there are a couple places you can find me on the internet. The main one being birchandlilyfiber.com. The rest of the places you can find me, Instagram, Ravelry, they'll all be linked down below in the description. As well, don't forget about the Bloom Baby Bloom make along going on. It's still running until July 1st. I've seen a couple people put their entries in the Ravelry group and they're super cute. Um, but if you are knitting, anything that is floral themed, floral yarn, floral name. If you use my yarn, you get double entries, anything like that. All the information will be down below in the description, but I would love if you would join Tracy of Grizzly Knits and I with our Bloom Baby Bloom make along. On that note, I have worked a tiny, tiny bit on my entry for the Bloom Baby Bloom make along. Obviously I'm not entering, but I am, oh no, did I leave it downstairs? I did, I'll have to go get it, but I am knitting along. You can crochet as well, did I say that? <laughs> but I am knitting along with you guys and I am working on something super pretty for the Bloom Baby Bloom make along, so let me go get that. Okay, so I'm back. What I cast on for the Bloom Baby Bloom make along is a pressed flower shawl. It's a pattern by Amy Christoffers. I have it in one of my favorite bags ever because it's covered in adorable pins. Um. Super cute. I've used it as a purse before. It does, like, this tightens up. And then it's got the strap. Anyways, it's very jingly because of all my pins. But let me show you the yarn I'm using for my pressed flower shawl. The first colorway is on my Birch DK base. This is just natural. Uh, Birch DK is 100% super wash merino. And then this here is from Mulberry Fiber Co. This is on 100% non super wash merino. Yes, I'm mixing them. <laughs> um, but this colorway is called Herb Garden. So they're super pretty together. And honestly, I have seen no issues with mixing the two bases thus far. We'll see what happens when I block it. Um, <laughs> I've never done this before. I've heard of people mixing superwash and non-superwash and having no issues. So I figured I would try it. Give you guys the info, the inside scoop. <laughs> I don't know. I've had no issues. It's knitting up fine. I'm sure it will block just fine as well. But this is where I am. You can see my progress keeper there. I really haven't done a lot since the last time I showed this. I didn't show it last episode, but the episode before. Um, I don't know if I'll finish in time for the make along. But I'm just, I'm glad that it, it gave me a reason to cast this shawl on because it's super cute. So all of this is mosaic knitting. If I show you the back. So it's all slip stitches. There's no working with more than one ball of yarn at the same time. So every row is very, very simple. It's just either knitting, purling, or slipping stitches. And it makes this beautiful floral pattern. Um, I want needles. I'm using 3.75 millimeters. So that's US 5. For this shawl and I've used this is still my first ball of the green and then I had a little bit of leftovers from my Kindercal in berry or berry <laughs> in birch TK natural um, so I used that up first and so this is my first full skein that I've used of this one as well so I feel like I have lots I have um, the pattern called for I think three of this color and then two of this, so I have lots left. Um, I'm not worried at all, but yeah. I can't remember how many repeats of this I have left. I'm not sure, to be honest. But pattern is very easy to follow. It is charted. Um, I don't, I can't remember if there's written instructions or not. But it's definitely charted. If you haven't read a chart before, it's really not hard at all. It's just a matter of figuring out that 
like which which direction you read everything on but that's very simple to learn as well and then once you've figured it out I love charts I have no issues with charts whatsoever so yeah not tons on this like I said I'll move my progress keeper up now I'm gonna try so hard <laughs> to get better at using these progress keepers because you know it's it's motivating for me too to say okay, two weeks since the last episode, how much have I done? Oh, I did a lot. I felt like I didn't do much of anything. But I've just been so bad at using them lately, and I don't know why. So, Press Flower Shawl, Amy Christopher's loving this. Um, oh, while it's, it's coming to my mind, um, so this week is obviously a normal podcast episode. Next episode in two weeks is going to be a What's in My Travel project bag video. I am traveling to go to be in my sister's wedding, part two. <laughs> she got married last summer and it was obviously a very small wedding. So now we're doing like a reception sort of thing for everyone who couldn't be there. So I am traveling to be with my sister. So <laughs> I am going to actually be filming what's in my travel bag tomorrow, um, but it won't be going up until two weeks from now, just so I have a video for you guys while I'm gone and on my vacation. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to pack that or not. I can't decide. <laughs> I always notoriously overpack when we are going places because it's like, well, what if I want to work on this? Or what if I didn't pack this and then I really regret not packing it? Or so we'll see. I know there's a couple things here I really want to pack for sure. And they're both quite close to being done. So that's a good and a bad thing because they're going to take up lots of space, but I'm going to finish them. But then I'm going to need other stuff to work on when it's finished. The never ending issues of a crafter. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's move on to something else you haven't seen in a while. Uh, this moved project bags, because I do that apparently. So this is the bag that it is in now. This is my Gaia. It is a pattern I am test knitting for Agatha of Amanita Knits. And since the last time you saw this, I have done a lot. Uh, <laughs> there were some issues that were found in the pattern. So then I had to tear everything out and start over, which is totally fine. It's something I expected doing a test knit. Like, I, I get it. There, are, That's why we test knit, <laughs> is to find the issues. So then when other people like you knit the pattern when it comes out, sorry, there are no issues. And so I had to rip back, start over. So last episode was before I had ripped back. Well, now... Haha! -ha. It looks really short. I don't know. No, it's not short. I'm short. Um, so here is my Kaya. This yarn is also Birch and Lily Fiberco because I love using my own yarn now. I love using other people's yarn. I have yarn everywhere in here, but I've been using my own yarn a lot and it's been fun to kind of uh, see how it works up in things so that I can better recommend to you what to use for products. Anyways, this is where we are. So... I think I think last episode I really only had like these or last time I showed it these like sleeve caps done so this lace is going to run I guess it would be better to show you the sleeve that I just started the lace is gonna run down the whole sleeve which is so cute um, and I'm really excited like the lace obviously lace blocks out quite a bit and grows quite a bit so it's going to be cute it has a dropped shoulder nice v-neck and then it does have a split hem at the bottom. Now, <laughs> this hem, I made a mistake last night. Uh, I thought I had my ribbing needles in this project bag. I did not have my ribbing needles in the project bag. I had the wrong size needles in there. Why? I don't know. Um, so I knit all of this ribbing <laughs> with the wrong size needles. And I was just going to leave it. But I'm the type of person where it's really bothering me now. <laughs> so at some point in knitting this, before I block it, I'm going to rip back the ribbing on the bottom here and knit them with the correct gauge size needles. Um, because the main reason, if you can see here, there is a lateral braid running. I'm trying to get as close as I can without like being awkward, <laughs> running above the ribbing. And it just, the way it transitions into the ribbing because I accidentally used a bigger needle, is too messy for my liking. I don't like it. It, it's bothering me. The more I look at it, the more it bothers me. <laughs> so I think I'll just be happier if I end up redoing that. So it's not the end of the world. The ribbing really didn't take me that long to knit. Maybe a couple hours. 
So I'm going to redo that, but I like seeing how it's going to be. The split hem is very cute. The lateral braid is very neat. I've never knit a lateral braid before. It's very hard to say, especially for me who talks really fast. Um, I've never knit that before. And so it's very simple. I picked up on it quickly. It looks really cute. I want to use it in other stuff because I think it makes a really neat transition from the ribbing to, or from the, the body to the ribbing. So yeah. Um, what do I have left to do? So obviously I'm going to pick up around the neckline and do ribbing on that, both the sleeves, but otherwise this is pretty much done. Um, I have used one full skein already. I have probably about half of two other skeins yet left, so I think I'm going to be able to get this done with three skeins, which is awesome. Um, this is on my birch sock base, which is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. It's very squishy and soft. It's my favorite um, fingering white base for the plump squishiness of it. I don't know. If it makes my knitting squishy, I love it. Um, so that is the base I'm using for it. And then, like I said, I'm using three skeins. I'm knitting the size small. So I think I am the furthest along in my test knit group on the sweater. So I'm excited to kind of see where everyone else is and get some pictures from them. I do know the designer was on vacation for a little bit, so she hasn't been able to respond to like any of our notes or anything yet. So waiting to hear back on that. I haven't had any major issues, so that's why I continued moving forward. Everything that I found was easily fixable and didn't change the construction of the pattern. It was just a rogue stitch that was off or something. So yeah loving this. I haven't knit, or no, I did knit a finger, I was going to say I haven't knit a fingering weight sweater in a while, but I have, because I just recently finished my Nordiska? Yes, Nordiska or no Novelli? I don't know, whatever that Caitlin Hunter sweater I finished recently was, but I recently finished that. So yeah, it's been a fun knit. Um, I'm trying to think, I, like I said, it's in testing. Uh, Agatha must knit really tight because I do believe the pattern called for a four millimeter needle and I had to drop all the way down to a three. So that's been interesting. I don't think I've knit a sweater on that tight of a gauge. And that means actually the way the pattern is written that I have to drop down to a 2.5 millimeter for the ribbing, which I think is a 1.5. It's like one needle size above what I use for socks, which is fine. Um, but like I said, I have to redo it because I think I accidentally knit it on a 2.75. I think. I'm not 100% sure on that. Anyways, loving knitting that. I've got a lot done. That's probably been the project I've focused on the most lately, um, but there are some other things I have worked on. Uh, this next project you saw last episode, that crafty little fox bag, um, and it's completely different from when you saw it last because I tore the whole thing out and started over. Um, the main reason being last episode, I was like, yeah, I cast it on with 64 stitches because it's color work and the sock is going to be a little tighter. It was not tighter. It was way too big <laughs> and way too loose. Um, the other reason being one of the colorways that I'd put in this pair of socks, I didn't like. Um, so I tore it out and I started over. So these are my bits and bob socks. This is a pattern by Morgan Panic of Shop Knitting Nelly, I think on Instagram. Um, so what I ripped out, I don't even have the color with me anywhere th anymore. Um, there was a light blue in here that I just did not like. So I tore that out and I'm now knitting this on the 56 stitch size instead of the 64. So it's just a really cute scrap sock pattern, um, which I really have not knit enough of <laughs> considering how many scraps I have. Um, I'm gonna have to film a craft room tour again soonish because the craft room has changed so much since the last time I filmed. Um, there's stuff on this wall now. This whole closet has shelving in it now. It didn't before. So I definitely need to film <laughs> a new craft room tour. Um, but the amount of scrap yarn I have is ridiculous. Um, and just doing a scrap blanket is, is not gonna use it all up. But anyways, scrap socks are fun. So 56 stitches. Um, I did a two by two rib on here for 15 rounds. I'm using 2.25, focus on the sock, 2.25 millimeter needles. That's a US one. Um, so I'm just going to keep alternating 
the four colors that are in the leg. This color here I'm going to continue to use just for the ribbing, the heels, and the toes. And this is going to be the body of the sock. Um, so for the heel, I am going to be using the heel in Lindsay Fowler's pattern Simple Short Bread Socks. It is an afterthought heel, but it fits like a heel flapping gusset, and I love it. So I've never been an afterthought heel person, but the moment I found that afterthought heel, and I tested it for her, and then I've used it ever since, it's amazing. I love it. But yeah, ever since I tested that for her and saw how it fit, I'm down for an afterthought heel. I still like heel flap and gusset, but for something like this, it's nice to just be able to insert an afterthought heel in. Um, and the way the pattern is written, it's impossible not to do it without an afterthought heel. So that is what I'm going to use. I will, I know on the last video, I forgot to link it down below. I did add it later on though, um, but I'll make sure it's linked down below this video as well. But yeah, I'm just using various scraps, having fun. It is color work, um, but it's very simple. If I show you the wrong side of it, like there's really not much going on for floats. So the only thing you have to be really careful about is obviously not making the floats too tight because it's a sock. And if they're too tight, that's not gonna be fun. <laughs> but yeah, loving these. I feel like I'm talking really fast today. I apologize if I am, I have so much to do. We leave on Thursday and it's Monday. And so I feel like, I don't know, I'm, I've brought this upon myself. You'll learn soon enough when you start seeing the videos for it, but I have a new yarn collection that's coming out after we get back, but I wanted to have all of the photos and the yarn and everything done for it and shot so that I could kind of, while we're gone, have pictures to put on Instagram. Cause if you don't post on Instagram, the algorithm just like shoves you off into nowhere and forgets about you and your engagement tanks for months. So I figured if I could have all that stuff photographed, then I would have content for while I was gone that I could release. And then by the time I got back, I could release the new collection. So I've been busy because of course, <laughs> you think you're ahead of schedule, you think you're getting stuff done. And then it's like, oh dear, I leave in like three days and I haven't done all this stuff. So busy, busy, but yeah. I also have been very monogamous. So that's, that's on me. Anyways, one final product to show you this episode. This is my beautiful Brooklyn haberdashery bag that is the purse bag that I want to carry everywhere. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, anyways, this is my home sweater v-neck pattern by Kadri. I showed this to you last episode. I am pretty positive. I am knitting this up with some beautiful, beautiful commercial yarn. This is called Barocco Mochi. It is 73% baby alpaca, 35% nylon, 26% merino wool, and 2% other stuff, which I'm assuming is, like, there's a little bit of Tweety Bits in here and stuff. I'm assuming that's the other, and it's some sort of, like, nep or something like that. But it's just beautiful. This is the vanilla color. Um, of course, it doesn't have the name on here, but the color number for vanilla is 3202. So I'm knitting a sweater with this. I am actually knitting the exact same pattern with the exact same yarn that Aro of Aro Knits and Pearls did. And I think I've talked about her on every episode for the past, I don't even know how long. And I am not even sorry about it. <laughs> but last episode, I had barely anything done on this. This episode, I have almost a whole body. <laughs> actually, probably not almost a whole body. The body on this is going to be quite long. But... It's connected. Last time I only had like this back section and one shoulder. Um, cause you knit the back and then you attach the shoulders and work them down until the V-neck is done and then connect right here and then knit the body in the round. So I feel like I've got a lot done. This is so fun to knit with. It's so soft. It doesn't shed as bad as like a Surrey alpaca or a mohair would. I found, at least, I don't find fluffs everywhere and I don't feel like I'm eating it. So I also appreciate that. But I also just love watching all the different colors appear. Because there's just so much going on in this color. I hope that doesn't blow out. I can't see my monitor right now. But there's just so much going on and it's so pretty. So, and I like how it looks on me kind of skin tony but kind of not and I'm, I'm here for it <laughs> anyways so i am knitting this up i don't know if it's the called for needles i don't think it is 
I don't have the pattern. Yeah, I don't have the pattern here with me to tell you. I apologize. Um, but I'm knitting this on four millimeter US six needles. And I'm knitting at the size medium. I purchased, I think, six skeins or little balls of this yarn for it. And I should have plenty. How much is in here? 50 grams, 191 yards. So I should have plenty to finish it. Obviously, I've only used two so far. And I'm maybe a quarter of the way through my next two. So super, super cute. Um, and enjoying working on it a lot. Something about a stockinette sweater is just wonderful because like there's all the thinking and stuff, especially for a top down at the beginning, like increasing for the v-neck and all that stuff takes a little bit of thinking and paying attention to, but then you get to the body and it's just like round and round and round and round and round and I don't have to watch anything and I can just enjoy it. So it's been a fun knit. So this is another one that I'm contemplating bringing, but like I said, I don't have tons left on it. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if I end up packing it and bringing it with me. I probably will. I overpack. Um, I don't know if you remember the, I'm looking over there because it's on the floor and maybe I'll just grab it. Um, but the woolen honey bag that I got, oh gosh, maybe three or four episodes ago. Um, I had purchased it and it arrived in the mail while I was filming an episode. And so my husband brought it in and I opened it on screen. Let me just grab it. So I'm thinking this will just be the big bag that I put everything in. Now, I'm also thinking that last time I, the, the bag I used was maybe a little larger. So either I need to pare down what I brought with me at Christmas or this is just going to be the knitting bag and then I'll have a different one for cross stitch. Did you see that fuzz? <laughs> that was total... Okay, I said the Barocco wasn't shedding, but obviously it is because the fuzz just flew. Um, <laughs> but we'll see. This is a cute bag. Anyways. Yeah. That is what I've been working on over the past couple weeks. Lots of work on the new collection. You'll be really excited to see it, I hope. I'm really proud of it. I think it's really cool and unique and I haven't seen anything like it before. So I'm excited to share it with you guys. And yeah, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. It means a lot to me and it also helps you out because if you subscribe and turn on notifications, YouTube will actually show you when my videos go live. Otherwise they're kind of bad at doing so. You could also hit the like button cause that helps me out a lot as well. And I will see you in two weeks with my, what is in my travel knitting bag video. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye.